This is the pit stop. Hi, I'm Tom Pitt, and I'm an ASE Master Certified Automotive Technician and Automotive Technology Teacher at Hardin County Schools Early College and Career Center. Over the past decade, I've spent my time maintaining and repairing customers, students, family, friends, and even my own vehicles. Over the course of those past 10 years, I've learned lots of tricks of the trade. I'm going to share those with you throughout this video series. Today, we're going to talk about tires, why they're important, and how to maintain those. Tires are the premier safety feature of any vehicle. You may not realize this, but the tires are the only thing separating your vehicle from the road. So now, we're going to take a look at what makes a tire a tire. Everyone uses them, but very few people know very much about them. Let's get tires. There are a lot of frequently asked questions about tires. Why are tires black? What do these numbers mean? And what are these little nubs on new tires? Let's talk about some of those now. Now these nubs around the outside of the tire, on a new tire, they're called vent spews. And their purpose is whenever a tire is molded from the inside and the outside, and the, uh, the purpose of these is to force air out. And so when the air is forced out, they're forced out through these little vents. And so, as long as rubber is sticking out, they know that they've gotten all of the air. The tire size is recognizable on the side of the tire in the format of a letter, uh, usually P or sometimes LT. A three-digit number, in this case it's 245, dash another two-digit number, in this case 75, R meaning a radial tire, and then the last number, two-digit number, to indicate the rim size. In this case, this vehicle has a passenger car tire, that's the P, 245, meaning that the tire itself is 245 millimeters wide. The next number, 75, is what we call the aspect ratio. That's how wide the sidewall of this tire is, from the rim up to the tread. And that 75 is a percentage. It means it's 75% of 245. The R indicates that we have a radial tire, and the 16 is in inches, the diameter of the rim. The date code on the tire is a really important number. Uh, you can see right here the number is 345. That indicates to us that this tire was made the 34th week of 1995. So the first two numbers will be the week, and the last will be the year. If it's a three-digit code, it was made in the 1990s. Anything beyond that has a four-digit code. So 3407 would be the 34th week of 2007. Let's check the tire pressure in this tire. Let's remove the valve stem cap. Then, using our tire gauge, we'll press this end onto the valve stem. So where do we find what the actual tire pressure should be. What's not on the tire, as some people would think, it's actually on the door, on this placard. On this Ford Taurus, the tire pressure is supposed to be 30 PSI. That means our front tire is a little bit low. Let's see what that might cause. Overinflated or underinflated tires can not only cause instability, they can cause premature tire wear. It's seen here. The center of this tire worn out because it was overinflated. The outside edges have been worn because at some point it was also underinflated. To inflate this tire to its correct pressure, we're going to use this. It's called an air chuck. You can pick that up at any hardware store or auto parts store. We'll connect this to the end of our air hose by pulling on the collar, pushing in, and releasing. Next, we'll take the air chuck attached to the hose and put it on the valve stem of the tire. careful not to overinflate because you can't really tell the tire pressure of a tire just by looking at it. Always check the gauge.
sometimes you run into the issue of having a nail or a screw in a tire. This is dangerous because low tire pressures can cause instability, premature tire wear, or even tire failure. We can fix that using a simple plug kit that you can get at any auto parts or retail store. Let's see how it works. To plug a tire, we'll need a few things. We need an air chuck, which we talked about earlier, to put air in the tire. Trying to plug a low tire is gonna be a very difficult procedure, so it's always important to make sure the tire is inflated to a proper tire pressure beforehand. Vulcanizing cement is gonna make sure that the tire plug adheres to the tire itself. A reamer will clean out the hole that the nail, screw, or other obstruction was in so that the plug can have a clean place to seek from. The plugging tool and the plug will go in after the reamer and we'll use a pair of side cutters to pull the bolt or nail out from the tire. Let's see how the process works. First, we use side cutters to remove the screw, nail, or other obstruction that's in the tread. It's important to notice that this nail is within the boundaries of the tread itself. A good rule of thumb is if you lay your thumb against the corner of the tire, if your thumb covers the nail or the screw, the tire needs to be replaced and can't be repaired. We can typically use side cutters to remove the screw. Sometimes, if the threads of the screw are in the tire really tight, a screwdriver will help to remove this from the tread. With the screw removed, we'll insert the reamer into the hole to clean out the hole so the plug can make a good bond. You may have to put a little bit of pressure on the reamer to get it all the way in the tire. Sometimes this takes a little bit of effort. but it's an extremely important step in the tire plugging procedure. With the reamer still on the tire, we're gonna take some vulcanizing cement and place that onto the plug itself that's on our plugging tool. With the vulcanizing cement on our plug, we can remove the reamer and install our plug. Again, this takes a little bit of force as well. Once we get the plug in, we're going to twist that and then pull out, leaving an airtight seal. It's really important after this to cut these edges off that are sticking out. We can use a knife or we can use the side cutters that we use to remove the screw. Looks like that's all the time we have for today. Until next time, I'm Tom Pitt reminding you to keep it between the lines, shiny side up.